Okay, you guys, I am so excited. This is going to be such an incredible episode. I am here with the one and only Iris Jardiel. Iris, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I am really excited to get into your story and what you've experienced because while parts of it are unique, a lot of parts of it are actually unfortunately pretty relatable. So yes. um, to give everyone a little backstory, I'm going to let you give the backstory of Temptation Island and everything you went through, but um, you've been through a lot. Yes. What's the, let's, get, <laughs> let's do the long story short, the elevator pitch, and then we'll dive in. All right. It sounds good. Um, so basically I was on season four of Temptation Island, which is on USA Network and Peacock. And it's um, your typical reality TV dating show. Um, on this show, there's four couples that they take on an island and they're testing their relationship because they're at a crossroads. And basically the four taken girls have to live in a house with 12 single guys and the four taken boys have to live in a house with 12 single girls and go on dates with them and do parties. And then you figure out if you want to be with your partner or not, or if you make a connection with someone else, or if you want to leave single. It's and a so, recipe for yes. a lot of things. Disaster, yeah. <laughs> yes. So you went on with your boyfriend at the time, Luke. Yes. We were together for five years. And um, on the show, we got engaged at the end. So... It seemed like it was all fun and roses, but it actually wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's back up. Okay. What led you and Luke to decide like, yeah, this seems like a good idea. Like, were you at a crossroads when you decided we to go on? Yes, okay. we were at a crossroads. I felt like we'd been dating for so long and we weren't really taking the next step towards engagement, but there were a few reasons for that. Like I'd caught him messaging other girls in the past and flirting with them, and it made me feel uncomfortable. There'd be like random girls that he would DM, um, some girls that he actually had history with, and I just felt like that was not okay. But I'd never actually caught him physically cheating at that time, so I thought we could still work this out. So when uh, Temptation Island reached out to us to interview, they like found us on Instagram and sent us a DM. I was like, Sounds like a free vacation. Sounds like fun. But at the same time, maybe this could help our relationship, which honestly is never a good idea. I feel like if you even <laughs> think you have to go on that show, your relationship is probably not in a good standing. <laughs> Do you, was it like an unspoken thing that like, oh, yeah, we are either going to end up like coming out of this together or end up being pulled apart and with other people or just broken up? Or were you kind of like, no, like we got this? We thought that we got this. We were like, okay, like we both never actually like physically cheated. I've never like emotionally cheated. I think like you have stuff to work on, but I want us to come out of this and be better and grow from this and possibly be a power couple. Like that's the dream. <laughs> so <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> I, it, it sucks because I mean, even af just from knowing that there were times where you caught him yeah, I mean, people texting people like emotionally cheating, but you still had this idea like we can make it through, like we yes. can do this. And with going on the show, you were like, this can make us stronger. Like we can come out on top. Yeah, that was my plan. And at the same time, there was still like 10 to 20 percent of me that was like, if he does cheat on me on the show, then I know for real that this is not meant to last. And it's yeah. good for me either way. Totally. Okay. So you go on the show. What was it like? Obviously you, again, you got engaged, as you said, what yeah. was it like being on the show? What were the dynamics once these other people were involved and were you still feeling throughout it? Like, okay, like this is actually good. We made the right call. Like we're going to get through this. So honestly, when I was there, I felt like everything was solid. I was like, I'm not cheating. I know that. Like I, love my boyfriend. I want us to make it out of this. I'm pretty solid. But once you're there, it's like a whole different experience with production, trying to be in your ear, telling you that your partner's not good enough for you, trying to lead you a certain way to make connections with other people. And even though I still knew after all of that, that I was good, I was a little nervous for Luke. <laughs> I was like, can he handle this? Can he do it? 
And um, it, it seemed like he did. But then when it got to the reunion, I was literally so shocked. And this was like, at the reunion you were engaged. Yes, we were engaged. I had a ring on my finger. I thought like everything was going to be fine, that we were like the fairy tale couple. But then they aired all these clips of him crossing lines with one of the girls. And it was horrible. <laughs> like I was super embarrassed. Wow. Yeah, that's really, really tough, especially like after this journey of, okay, I think like we actually did do this and we did come out as this power couple and everything's great. And now suddenly, oh my God, not only is that not true, but I said yes to a proposal kind of under false pretenses. Yeah, it it was awful. I was just trying to keep it together. I remember in one of the clips they aired um, the night before we got engaged, um, his overnight date was literally like straddling him in a hot tub in their swimsuits and like his arms are around her and he's like holding her. And I was just like, we got engaged the next day and you're doing that. That's insane. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Did he actually like kiss anybody or was it just like beating around the bush of actually physically cheating? So that's the thing. I guess I will never 100% know. Um, as far as I know, he didn't kiss anyone and I want to believe that, but then part of me is like, well, they withheld so much footage from me. Maybe they wanted to keep it open-ended at the reunion to where I could go either way and like, it'll still be okay with the audience. Totally. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So what happened after the reunion now, once you saw all this, because obviously in the past you had forgiven him and you know, held on to this hope. But after seeing this while engaged, what was going through your head? So much was going through my head and I was like internally freaking out. But if you watch it, I kept it together so well. And I was just like, I think we're fine. He told me everything. And if that's the worst of what happened, then we're good. And I just left it at that. And like, no one could really say anything because the ultimate decision's up to me. So they just continued along. But I was pissed. I was like, I can't throw the ring at him and break up with him because I'm going to look like an idiot since there's a ring on my finger. And I just feel like I have to work this out with him or at least hear him out because it's not fair that I just do that on stage when I haven't even heard his side. That is so <laughs> crazy. I'm like freaking out at the thought of like you sitting there like cameras on you like this is going to air and you're finding all this out and you're just like, yeah, we talked about it. <laughs> like, yeah. Like we, I yeah, like, I know. Don't worry. We're good. We moved past it. Exactly. I shit. think everyone thought I was nuts because like, I mean, all the things for you for like being able to keep your cool. Yeah. Cause like all the singles that were like seated next to us on the side, their mouths were dropped. They were just like melting in their seats. Like, oh my God, what an idiot. And I just had to be like, yeah, we're totally fine. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Inside, you weren't fine. No. And <laughs> it sucked, too, because even though, like, when you watch it on TV, it seems like we were only up on stage for, like, 15 minutes. But it was, like, two hours of everyone on the show, like, even the singles, just berating him on stage. And I just oh had to, God. like, sit there and take it. Like everyone thinks my fiance is an idiot and I just have to sit here and defend him the whole time. <laughs> wow. This is, is bringing me back to like multiple conversations I've had with people where somebody, an ex has cheated on them and it was brought to their attention after by all of these other people of like, oh yeah, he cheats on everyone. Like the person that he's now with, I'm sure he's cheating on her too. Like everyone just knows that this person like does that. And she was like, well, yeah. I didn't know. It's so sad. <laughs> yeah. I totally okay. know how that feels. Yeah. How did you, like what happened after the reunion? Like when, once the cameras were off, you were out the door. So I still had to keep on my best face. Like, backstage in front of production in front of everyone but then when we got back to our hotel room I remember just shutting the door and being like what the fuck was that <laughs> you just humiliated me like our friends and family are gonna see that I don't even know what to think like why did all those clips exist 
And he didn't really have an excuse for it. He was just like, I'm so sorry. I look like a complete idiot. I never want to make you feel that way. Um, I just was in the moment and I didn't want to make anyone upset. And it was just hard for me to firmly say no to people. So I was like, that's not what a husband would do. (laughs) Right. Like this isn't, you're not just in a relationship anymore. Like you are engaged to be married. Yeah. And if you were planning on proposing to me, like there's no way that you're letting any of that happen. Right. Even, even if like, yes, like there's producers involved whispering things in your ear, there's alcohol involved, all this other stuff. But if you are planning to spend your life with somebody, Mm-hmm. You say, you say no, you actively yeah. know what you want and what you don't want. Exactly. And you would never want to put yourself in a position to hurt that person. Like you do everything in your power to make sure that their feelings are protected. We like and to think so. We like to think so. But like <laughs> the funny thing is he didn't even really plan on proposing to me. Apparently like I guess production egged him on to do it. They came into his room and, like a couple days before they asked him like, Hey, it seems like you and Iris haven't seriously done anything. Would you want to propose to her? And he said to them, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. And then they were like, okay, well, just so you know, in case you want to, we have a ring for you. And I think like him being a cheapskate, like a light bulb went off in his head and he was like, Oh my God, a free ring. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. That's like, I under, here's the thing. I understand reality television. I understand production. You have to make drama. You have to make people want to watch. But yeah. that is, that is crossing a line. Absolutely. And like, I never would have said yes if I knew that he full on with his whole heart did not want to propose yeah. to me. How did you find that out? He told me after, some of production told me after. Yeah, because I was like, well, why did you propose to me then, like, if you were crossing all these lines? And he's like, honestly, like, production kind of, like, wanted me to, and I I thought it might be a good idea. And I'm like, might be. (laughs) Like, You don't just propose to someone because you think it could possibly maybe be a good idea. Yeah. Exactly. Like you should know with your whole heart and soul that you want that person for life. When he proposed to you, what was like your confidence level of this is going to (laughs) work? To be honest, I had some reservations about it because I wasn't thrilled at his proposal. So when he got down on one knee, um, Like on season three, a guy proposed to his girl. Absolutely beautiful. One of the most beautiful proposals I've ever seen. And he had a whole speech prepared. He said her first, middle, and last name and asked, will you do me the honor of being my wife? Are they still together? They just got married this past year. So yes. Love (laughs) love it. Love it. Love it. Continue. (laughs) Yeah. And they're the only couple from Temptation Island that's married right now. Like they are solid. They work through their issues. I'm super happy for them. They're beautiful. Um, But when Luke proposed, he didn't really have a speech ready. He said like one sentence that was like, thank you so much for helping me through this trajectory of my life. Um. Like, will you be my girl forever? <laughs> and yeah, and this isn't like a a card from CVS for your birthday. Yeah, I wanted him to say the words, "Will you marry me?" or "Will you do me the honor?" No of shit. Me? Or will you yeah. be my wife? Like something. Say my first, middle, and last name, or like give a speech as to why we're made for each other. Why you love me? Will you be my girl forever? Check yes, check no. Like, <laughs> like, what is that? Yeah. Okay. And I was just thinking the whole time, like, is production going to make him do it over again? Because I, I want oh something God. a bit more special than this. And they didn't cut at all. And I, in the moment, I was a little disappointed. But I was also like, well, at least he did it. At least we're the only couple that made it out this season. Like, there's that. Yeah. 
my like heart is breaking for you hearing that because that should be the most special moment of your life. And for you to like be in it being like, is someone going to tell him to do it again? Cause that wasn't, that wasn't it. Like, yeah. That's, and then you probably like felt really conflicted internally because of that after like, Oh, like, well, that moment wasn't what I thought it was going to be like, what does that mean for this relationship? Yeah. And if he truly cared and loved me, he would have had something prepared and memorized and it, it would have been heartfelt. Yeah. And you, you would have, even if it was short, like, even if it was short, you would have been able to like feel the genuine intention and love behind it. Yes. And I just didn't feel that it, it felt disingenuous. Yeah. Wow. Spoiler alert. It didn't work out. Yep. (laughs) Unfortunately, but honestly, I'm so much happier now. (laughs) That's what I want to get to. And that's why I'm, I'm really, really glad that you're here to talk about this. Yeah. Where did things fully end? Like what, how long between like the reunion finding out about like his behavior throughout the season that you didn't know about until it ended, ended? Like what was the time period there? So we had the reunion in February or March and then the show finished airing, I think, end of May. And then I remember when it aired, I was still so humiliated because right after the season finale where he proposes to me, the reunion airs. And it was just like, awesome. Like, I feel humiliated. And I remember just like crying in bed for like three days because even though we got a lot of support, um, there was a lot of people telling me that I deserve better. And that just doesn't feel good to hear because I should feel protected and safe with my partner. I should feel like I'm proud of him. And for there to be so many people telling me like, there's so many red flags, Iris, like you shouldn't go through with this. I, I felt really conflicted. And then I remember trying to communicate it with him and he didn't really take the time to understand my feelings. He was just like, well, you already knew all those clips aired in February or March. Like, why are you still sad about it? And I'm like, it aired on national television. Like, yeah. also when I was on that stage, I was internally like freaking out and in panic mode and I couldn't digest all those clips at once. So like seeing it all over again is insane to me. Like I can actually pick apart the moments where I'm like, how could you say that? Or how could you do that? Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I've always thought about when watching any reality dating show back is about how like all, like all of this happened like a year ago, sometimes longer than that. And to then be watching it and learn things that you didn't know, like hear conversations, you had no idea they were had and and you've continued on with your life, not knowing. And suddenly not only do you know, but your friends, your family, like everybody is finding this stuff out at the same time as you. Like that is such a mind fuck that like, I obviously haven't experienced it, but I like wouldn't wish that upon anyone. (laughs) Yeah. It was crazy. Like you'd think that the show itself would mess with you, but then it's like everything after the show messes with you even more. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what really caused it to be over? So we decided to work things out after everything aired and things were good for a bit. Like we were hanging out all the time still. I thought that like we were getting to a point where okay, like we can work this out. But then in July, I caught him messaging a girl again. (laughs) And it was a random girl. He'd never met her. She lived in like Miami or something. That makes it even worse. Yeah, it was horrible. And it was like this little Instagram baddie, right? Um, I feel like she was like 18 to 21 years old. I think I saw like college pics. Oh my God. And like we are like – he was 29 at the time. So it was just like, oh it was my weird God. Me. And he wasn't like sexting her or anything, but I thought the messages just crossed the line because she yeah. commented on one of his stories, like over DM. She's like, that's super hot. And his response back was like, 
oh, you like skater guys, ha ha, with like a winky face. That's not okay. <laughs> like you are engaged and I'm your fiance. You just, you don't do that. He's engaged and he's engaging with this. Yeah. You exactly. can't have it both ways. Yeah. You just can't. You can't. And it's not worth it for someone yeah. you don't even know who lives across the country. So I was really upset by that. Um, I didn't want to talk to him for a bit. I'd broken up with him again. And I was like, wow, like, what is everyone going to think now? Because I feel like an idiot. You just emotionally cheated on me once again. And yeah. now we have this whole support system backing us from the fan base of the show what do i do and we took some time apart he said he was sorry and then he asked for me back again <laughs> and at that point i was like we have such like a support system behind us of fans that love ti like i just really want to make it work and so i agreed to that and I was like, can you just promise me you will never do it again? And he promised me that. So, like, looking back, should have never gone back to him. I should have known. Like, we'd gone through a whole reality TV show. And for him to do this again is just absolutely unacceptable. How much of it in your mind was because of this pressure of, like, everyone's watching. Like, I don't want to look stupid because it, it's tough. You have like, like you keep going back to this concept of like, we have the fan base, the, the support system, the viewers. And like, we like, you don't want to look like an idiot in front of them. Like they yeah. like love you guys together, want you to make it. But at the same time, those people also want to see you happy. I know. And probably would have been like really proud of you for like fighting Sick for yourself. Myself. So like, yes. I'm curious what, cause I obviously like, I, I can't imagine the position that you were in, but I'm curious like how much of that really was a motivating factor or like how much of that was weighing on your decision to like continue to try and make it work. It was basically all I could think about because I didn't want to disappoint my parents. They thought we were getting engaged, which by the way, he never asked my father for permission to marry me. That was another thing too. I was like, Julian from season three did that. Like he FaceTimed her dad on the show and asked for permission. And when we got back, he just kind of told my parents like, yeah, we're engaged. And my parents were like, oh, like what? congratulations. Um, they told me like when he was gone, like why didn't he ask us permission? Like that's right. the traditional way to do it. Yeah, but it weighed on me a lot knowing that I could be disappointing people. Some people thought maybe they could believe in love because of us. And it wasn't real love. When things were finally over, yeah. did you get this backlash that you feared of people feeling let down and of people being disappointed that it didn't work out? Like what was the actual response versus like what you were fearing? Oh my gosh, actually, everyone was so happy for me. I don't think I've gotten any backlash and I was expecting some, but literally everyone is so happy for me. They were just like, I always thought you deserve better or they're like, finally, like, it's been insane. And I am just like so happy that I finally decided to do what's best for me. Yeah. And, and that's, I mean, in a way it's like, the whole time you had this hope for the relationship, like you went on the show hoping you'll make it out on top. You got engaged. You, you hoped you could make it through. You sat through the reunion. You're like, okay, like we'll work through this. Yeah. But at the end of the day, there's like, what's the point of working through something if you're not happy and if you're not being treated the way you deserve. And I love that you said that everyone was so supportive because that's how it should be. Like people yeah. want to see good people win and even a win in this case could be leaving a toxic relationship. Yes, exactly. So it, it felt amazing. And I truly am at my happiest. Like I've, I've like learned to know what I deserve and that I'm worth more than that. And even though things went bad, like I still hope the best for Luke. Like I wish him happiness. I hope he's better for the next girl and I hope he finds an amazing girl.
Yeah. Well. What has your dating life been like since? So it's so interesting because um, Luke and I did the back and forth thing for a while, right? Even after that July thing, we got back together. We broke up again because he wanted to leave the country and go on a trip without even asking me. And it was just a whole mess. And I remember allowing him to go on this trip. Like, he can do whatever he wants, right? It's his life. He's an adult. But I thought it was super weird that he was basically abandoning his fiance. Like, it's a little selfish. Um, But if it was what was going to make him feel like he's growing, then I wanted him to discover that for himself as long as he stayed loyal to me. But he ended up not staying loyal to me. And I found out he cheated on me with a girl in Thailand. (laughs) I have like all the messages still. Um, Jesus. He was talking to multiple girls in Thailand, actually. Some of them were like 19. Um, And I found out he actually had sex with a girl there while I was on a flight there. So I have all the dates match up on the text messages. And I remember I took a story on the plane. And you know how you can do stories on Instagram with like the date and time? Yeah. I was like on an airplane. It says February 5th. And the date he hooked up with this girl was February 5th. So I was on a plane ride there while he did this. And it was just, it was heartbreaking because he couldn't have just like waited. Honestly, it's probably best because he was still talking to other girls the whole time. So He's just not trustworthy. Have you learned anything about like what goes on in somebody's brain when they're doing this? Like, how did he think that all of this was okay? I honestly don't know. After everything we've been through, like you would think that he learned enough to just be loyal or care about my feelings. And he could literally break up with me before he does that yeah but he just went ahead and hit it behind my back and i remember finding out in late february because i spent a month in thailand with him thinking everything was fine and dandy he like he tried to win me back and he was like i want to fly out to thailand so i got there february 5th and he was telling me he wanted to prove to me that he's a changed man and he's a good guy, and that he only wants me. Yeah, like, it was wild, and I agreed to that. And it turns out, like, end of the trip, I find out all the evidence, and I'm just like, you are not at all the man that I want to be with. Like, I'm so done now. Yeah. And was that really the end? And and, and That was really the end, yeah. It sucks because I – I feel like, I mean, hearing your story and hearing so many others, it's, it's the people who want to believe in the good in someone else who end up getting the most hurt. It's like, you believed he could change. You believed him when he said he wanted to be better. You believed him when, you know, the same thing would happen again. And he would apologize and say like, that's it. Like I'm done. Like no more. Like I want this to work. And every single time it just comes back to, bite you yeah it's so sad it is I just remember at that point though I was exhausted from all of this I didn't even shed a tear I was just so done and the last um five days of the trip after I found out he was literally like crying in bed having panic attacks like every hour in the middle of the night Begging, but he me. did that. Like he did that to himself. I it didn't have to be that way. And regardless of that situation, he's always been messing around and flirting with other girls behind my back. So it's, it, I think he just thinks that that situation was what really did it. But it's the accumulation of everything he's done. Yeah, and this was just the straw that broke the camel's back. Yes, which they, which like, thank God, thank God it happened. Yeah, thank, thank God. God you figured it out. And thank God yeah. you were, you called it off once and for all. Exactly. I'm very grateful for that. Have you found that this has impacted you in the way you like approach dating now? Like 
do you struggle to trust people or are you trusting that, or are you able to give people a clean slate where it's like, okay, like he did this, but he is not the same person as this person. Cause I see that all the time. And I hear that all the time. Like, okay, Alana, like I got my ex cheated on me. I really do want to go back out there. I do want to like meet people, but how do I know that the same thing's not going to happen? I'm curious what your experience has been with that. Yeah. So another spoiler alert, I have a new boyfriend now. We can get more back into how we met, how everything transpired. But initially in the beginning, I did have trust issues and I feel like I kind of had a little baggage and it just makes such a difference when you have a loving, caring partner because they will work with you through that if they truly care about you. And that's what my current partner has done. Yeah. I'm so yeah. glad to hear that. And I think that's really like reassuring to people who have struggled with something similar or are struggling with it now where it it's not always going to be like this. Like there are people who will show up for you in the exact way that you need. There are people who will hear you out, who will be patient. And like, I'm sure there were times like I, I was cheated on and the entire time that it was happening, I had suspicions. And every time I was told like, you're crazy. Like, why are you accusing me of that? Like yeah. you're in your head. Like it makes you feel crazy. But then I also had to experience going to his apartment and seeing a hair on his pillow and questioning, is that my hair or someone else's? And yeah. it's really, really hard to overcome that. But there are people who will do what it takes to reassure you and to yeah. text you back on, on those nights of the week where in the past, if that person hadn't answered, you would have assumed they were with somebody else. And like, these people will say like, Nope, I'm here. Like, this is where I am. This is what I'm doing. And like, yeah. I can't wait to see you later. <laughs> exactly. Like it's so refreshing to meet someone who just really wants to protect your heart. And yeah. that's how I feel now. Like I feel like my feelings are always secure. He makes me feel like however I'm feeling is valid and he talks with me through it. He doesn't gaslight me or make me feel like I'm crazy for feeling insecure about something. And this is such a healthy kind of love that I'm just so grateful for. I love that. I'm so happy that you found your way there, even if it wasn't the smoothest road. Yes. Were you nervous about moving forward in your dating life with all of this information being out there about you? I was. <laughs> I was just like, if I get seen with someone else in public, everyone's going to talk. Everyone's going to think something. Even just like going to parties that like with people that Luke and I used to go to, I was nervous. Because you just don't know what people are going to say. And honestly, that's why I've been telling my story so publicly is because I just want to finally be free and live my life and be with someone that actually makes me happy. Yeah. Um, and you deserve to tell your story the way it happened to you because it's your story. Exactly. Yeah. I just want to get my truth out. And um, the executive producer of Temptation Island, her name's Trafari. She's amazing. I love her. We got on the phone after all this happened. And she told me that I have to speak my truth in order to feel free from this man. Because if I don't, then I'll never feel free. I'll always, um, I'll always keep thinking about him and the relationship and how to like protect our image. And she just said that that's the best thing to do for me. Which, by the way, she did not like Luke on the show. She didn't think he really? was good. Yeah, and she even said it to his face over email one at one point, I believe, while this season was airing. She just told him, like, you weren't very genuine. <laughs> oh, my God. Damn. Yeah. It's crazy. That's crazy. How <laughs> do you think you've changed as a person from Iris before going on the show to Iris today? What's funny is that when I watched the first two to three episodes, like a month or two ago, I look so miserable. It's literally insane. Like wow. I, it was funny because my current partner right now was like, oh my God, like that's a totally different girl than what I know now. Like the girl I know now is so happy, is glowing. You look like you just came out of like 
prison for a week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're like show. a shell of a human, like a shell of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like definitely more reserved on the show. I, I don't look happy. It's very clear. And it's just wow. crazy how positive changes and a positive person in your life can really glow you up. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's really crazy. I I almost wish that makes me like wish people would be able to see themselves and realize like, wait a second, that person doesn't look at like, wait, that person's not treating them right. <laughs> or even yeah. like see like actors acting out your current situation, but, like through mm-hmm. other people. And then to like be watching that and be like, no, like that person deserves so much more. And then have the TV be like, oh, this is actually you. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So that was, it was so interesting to see. And I'm like, wow, I've, I've come so far. <laughs> yeah, I'm so proud of you. And and it's something Thank that's you. so hard to overcome when there aren't cameras and there aren't all these people like dying to know what's going on. And the fact that yes. you overcame it with that added layer, like I can't even imagine how much stronger you came out of this situation than when yeah. you were when you went in. And you found your voice too. Like you, you, worked up the courage you found the courage to say no like I can't do this anymore and I deserve yeah. more yeah. yeah so it was a great learning lesson and honestly if everything didn't happen the way it did I wouldn't have met my current partner now who I love so much yeah where do you think you would be if you never went on the show honestly I'd I might still be with Luke and it would just be kind of a dead end. It wouldn't really be going anywhere. We'd still have the same issues. I'd keep trying to make it work. I wouldn't have explored other options and I'd probably still be unhappy. Yeah. Have you seen Luke since? No, but I keep hearing from friends within our friend group that he's just talking his shit spewing lies when I have all the text messages of evidence like yeah like no also as if it's not gonna get back to you like as if people aren't on your side yeah and like even on the show at the reunion um I think one of the single girls Juicy asked like um like Iris have you ever cheated on the relationship and both of us were like no so it's like he has the history of cheating he's always cheated on me like, what, what is we, there for him to say? Exactly. I think he's trying to frame it like because now I have someone new that like I'm the one that cheated, but I have all the text messages of evidence. I have so many messages yeah. of him admitting to cheating on me, saying like, I'm so sorry, or like I told my family that I full on cheated on you. And it's just like, <laughs> how does he think he can get away with that? Right. And, and also like why, what is his purpose right now in – almost like trying to instigate something like it's like he's trying to start something like you have those but you haven't you haven't posted them publicly I mean no, you have, I I haven't. but like like the more he does this he's just trying to, he's like trying to get a rise out of you like nothing good is going to come out of this for him I know and the crazy part is I never told like our friend circle besides like my two best friends what really went down I've kept it pretty classy and Apparently, even when he was still abroad, he was trying to call so many people, even like friends of ours that he's only met once and try to like spew this whole story that isn't even real, saying that Iris is the bad person. You should feel bad for me. And all of these people would call me and tell me what he said and be like, I don't believe it, Iris. That's just not you. Like, I always thought you deserved better. And I'd have to hear about it. And it would literally like boil in me to the point where like, I got to get my truth out because that's not fair. I've been classy about it this whole time. I haven't just randomly called everyone. He was calling people on Instagram. That's how you know that he's not even really friends with them. Who does that? I made an Instagram call once and it was an accident. And I was like, oh my God, what is that thing? (laughs) Exactly. Like he's calling people on Instagram Some of these people were like, I've only met Luke once. This was so weird. He was like rambling on and had this cold call sales pitch as to why he's the good guy and you're not. And I barely know him. (laughs) And he would even call people at like 3 a.m., just untimely hours. It was super weird. 
it's like I almost feel bad for him. Yeah, I but think like he, he, like, he dug himself into this hole and he, yeah, that, yeah there's nothing for him to do down like, there besides just like dig around and make his hole bigger. Yeah, he was like ruminating on it, probably out of guilt or something. Yeah. And I think also he showed he showed signs of narcissism because on the show, he always needed affirmation from everyone to where he couldn't just say no. And it's because he always wants to be regarded as like a good person or nice and he doesn't want to hurt anyone's feelings and he wants people to like him so I feel like when he was abroad and he didn't really have anyone to talk to that got to him and he's just like I have to call everyone and get them on my side so that they like me (laughs) Uh, wow yeah I have two final questions for you and I'm really excited to hear your answers the first is if you could go back in time or not go back in time, but if you, if Iris today could give a piece of advice to Iris from like six years ago or six years ago, either when you first started dating Luke or when you decided to go on the show, what would it be? It would be that it's never too late to start over. Like, don't be afraid to start over again. And I think a lot of people struggle with that because when they've been in something for so long, whether it's a career, a relationship, anything like even a routine they're afraid to get out of that comfort zone and start over to do what's best for them and i think it takes a lot of courage to do that because you never know that on the other side you could be a lot happier yeah it's really scary to make that leap but it's so so worth it it is (laughs) what is the best piece of dating advice you've ever received I think just literally from my mom, she's told me through all this, just know your worth. Like if you are a good person, if you are doing everything you can to respect people, respect your partner, your friends, you should understand that you deserve that same treatment back. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better. (laughs) Thanks mom for the advice. Yeah. Thanks mom. (laughs) Well, I am proud of you and I'm so happy for you and I can't wait to follow along with your relationship and and just see how happy you both are in it. Where can everybody else find you to do the same? So my Instagram handle is at Iris underscore Jardiel. And um, I'm also on Facebook, Iris Jardiel. I'm on threads, same as my Instagram handle. Perfect. Um, That's so yeah. funny. A good, good job remembering to drop threads in there. I know. I actually like threads. It's addicting. It's really fun. Yeah. I've been <laughs> finding myself like waking up in the middle of the night and being like, oh, let's check threads. I'm like, no, Alana, I can't do this. But yeah, I got to like rewrite my autopilot speech of like where to find me and include threads into it. So that was, yeah. that it's was a, a whole good reminder. Another social media app that now we have to get into. <laughs> Yeah, as if as if we have time for it, but I guess I guess we'll make time. Um yes. amazing. Well, thank you so so much for being here and for sharing your story. And yeah, yeah I, I'm so sorry you had to go through all of that, but I'm so proud of you and, and really just appreciative that you were willing to open up and share it with us. So thank you so much. Thanks for listening, daters. I hope today's episode made you feel just a little bit less alone out there, no matter what your status might be. Give your finger a break from swiping and hit that follow and review button instead. And if you have any burning questions or want to share your own dating horror stories, reach out to seeingotherpeoplepodcast at gmail.com. And in the meantime, keep on seeing other people. Seeing other people.